10 minutes from now, 10 minutes will mark the exact moment life changed forever. Tragedy struck this campus, changing the lives of thousands of 49ers on this campus. And tonight we are hearing from one of those survivors about how his life has changed over the past year. Drew Pescaro, his name became a household name virtually overnight as one of the four students who survived after being shot inside Kennedy Hall last year. WCNC Charlotte's Brandon Goldner spoke to Drew. Brandon joins us live with Drew's story. Brandon. Well, Fred, the first question I asked Drew, how he would describe this past year to his future children and grandchildren, he said it was the most positive and most negative year in his life. And we saw a lot of those positives on social media, but tonight he's introducing us and showing us some of the negatives. A lot of good things were going on in April. Like, I remember saying, like, this is one of the best months of my life, and, and then, you know, what happened happened. It happened the last day of April 2019. Sitting in his last class of the semester, gunshots. A bullet hits Drew Piscaro, missing his spine by just an inch. While you're in the hospital for that, you're just constantly, every single day, you're receiving really intense pain medicine. You're not thinking, you're just kind of out of it. 12 days went by before he got back in to checking his Twitter. A lot more people are paying attention to me and reaching out to me and stuff. Drew, Tim Tebow, what's up, dude? I was in a good place because I was doing a lot of fun things. He could use his platform to help others. It's okay to need help. It's okay to not be okay, that kind of thing. The message became more political. You take the time to discuss these bills. I wasn't trying to play a partisan side with it. It's your obligation. I'm 20 years old. This happened to me while I was just trying to attend school. That's not acceptable. When it was time to go back to school in August. Going back to being normal student Drew was just weird and at times it kind of felt lonely because, you know, you didn't have as many people reaching out to you. The semester only got tougher. He says he began down the road toward prescription drug abuse. I literally was at a point where I couldn't go to sleep because of just the, the racing thoughts. And, and it wasn't like a very serious thing, I'd say, but enough to the point where I had to kind of like realize like, OK, if I keep doing this, it will become a serious problem. He wrote his final tweet on Christmas and logged off. He decided to take all of his spring semester classes at home. In his weekly therapy sessions, Drew, who's a communications major, realized he didn't know how to communicate his feelings. That's when I started to, to come back up and it, it's still difficult, of course, but I'm in a lot better place than I was during that. He's now looking forward to next spring, marrying his girlfriend of six years and graduating. Being able to walk across the stage after going through such a traumatic experience, I know is going to weigh on me a lot, you know, both in positive and negative ways. And even though this is the one year anniversary, Drew says this is something he and the other survivors think about every day. And they're also always thinking about Reed and Riley at UNC Charlotte, Brandon Goldner, WCNC Charlotte. Back to you, Fred.